They say that beginning your medical internship is like drinking out of a fire hose. Well, for me, it was more like trying to take a sip from a water main break. And though some level of PTSD has probably suppressed that entire year, I do remember some things, and one of the things I definitely remember are those patient experiences that helped to shape me as a physician. The sweet aroma of gingerbread wafted through the doorway as a, a towering evergreen rose from a nest of tightly wrapped presents. Presents that were as distant of a memory as that aroma as I rushed through the hospital hallways to see my patient that morning. It was Christmas Eve, and while everyone else was wondering about Rudolph's shiny nose, I was barely keeping my head above water. I rustled my papers together and rushed to my first patient room. It was Mrs. J. She was laying there covered in a crimson blanket, quietly resting. Good morning, Mrs. J, I said. It's Dr. Knight, here to check up on you. She smiled and gave me her warm greeting. There she lay, fighting stage four stomach cancer. And after multiple rounds of chemo, there was nothing else that we could offer her medically. Unlike many of my patients, who may be admitted for a couple of days or maybe a week, she had been admitted for the majority of the year. In fact, this last admission was going on its ninth week. And through the complications and infections, her spirit continued to soar. And she was always the first patient that I saw every morning. On this morning, I reminded her that tomorrow was Christmas. And I asked her if she was going to have any visitors come to see her. Oh, yes, she replied. My entire family will be here. Make sure that you stop by to say hello. I promised her that I would, gave her hand a squeeze, and rushed off to see my next patients. Later that day, I saw Mrs. J being rolled off to chest x-ray. She had spiked a fever and had developed a productive cough. Though she, when she was passing, she saw me and she said, I'll see you tomorrow. It was now Christmas morning, and true to my custom, I started off my day, starting with Mrs. J's room. And Merry Christmas, she greeted me as I came in the door. I asked her if she was ready to see her family today, and she nodded and motioned to a pile of handwritten cards that she had prepared. I again promised her that I would come back later that evening. As I walked out of the room, I thought about my own family that I would not see this holiday. Now by that afternoon, my mood was far from merry, and there were a few people that I could have imagined joining those chestnuts and being roasted over an open fire. <laughs> But I kept my promise, and I made my way to Mrs. J's room. As I was getting closer, I heard the sound of laughter, and I could just imagine her grandchildren pulling at her blanket, or maybe her children recalling stories from days past. But when I entered the room, I was surprised to see the white uniforms of the nursing staff, all smiles surrounding Mrs. J. I made my way to her bedside, and I asked her if her family was still on the way. She replied, oh, no. They're all here now. I was just waiting on my grandson to arrive. She pressed a small gift into my hand and said, thank you. In that moment, we were Miss J's family. We were her foundation, her constant through her prolonged course. And a flurry of emotions ran through my mind. Should I be sad for my patient, upset that her biological family had not shown up, or sorry that these four walls had been her reality for the majority of the past year? But no, I felt honored, honored that on today, not only could I be her physician, but I could be her family. A few weeks later, Mrs. J passed away, and I quietly mourned my patient. But that small gift, a pen, has always remained as a reminder of why I do this thing called doctoring, this profession where you can lend your mind, your time, and your care, and ever so often, you can even lend your heart. Thank you.